Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Jordan, and I'm back with another drawing video. In this video, I'm colouring in the line work which I previously did for my Yandere simulator drawing. If you haven't seen the line work video, you can go check that out first and then watch this. I thought this would be a good opportunity to explain to you guys how I draw blood because I get people asking all the time. I kind of explain it in a bunch of my videos, but I'll try and explain it in as much detail as I possibly can so you guys can do it yourself but I'll get to that when I start drawing it. I'm just starting out by coloring the skin. This is a really fun drawing because she's got such like a innocent kind of look, but as everyone knows, she's a complete psychopath. So I tried to kind of show that in this drawing. I wanted to have half of her like the evil side and then half the supposedly innocent angel side or whatever. But yeah, she's not innocent. She is completely crazy. Definitely not the type of girl you want to be stalking you and calling you senpai. I'm sure there's probably girls like that out there. Just please stay away from me. <laughs> so I've done a bit of shading with my Prismacolors to bring in a couple of different colors. I really like shading with purples and pinks. I like the effect it gives. Some people don't like that, but that's what I like doing with my drawings. But anyway, we are up to the blood. So all I use, I use two colors pretty much. Light Mahogany, which is E07, I'm pretty sure, and then a Cherry White marker, which is R000. And that's all I use. It's really, really simple. It's kind of just like a technique where you layer it on top and then you smudge it around with your Cherry White marker. Really, really simple. It can be a little bit tough at first because your instinct is to generally blend smoothly with Copics, but that's not what you want to do with the blood. So before you get used to doing this, you're going to feel like you're about to completely ruin your drawing, but you've just got to trust yourself in this. The grittier it looks, the more realistic it's going to look. I'm just building up the layers with the light mahogany, using my cherry white marker to just smudge it round, and you get a really cool layered effect where it looks like there's like dry blood and it's kind of pooling in certain areas, and that's what makes it look realistic. Later, we're going to go in and put white highlights with a white gel pen, and that will give it a more shiny look, so it's going to look a bit more 3D towards the end of the drawing. One of the challenges for drawing blood is to not have the drips too thick. The reason why this can be a little bit challenging is because with the brush tips on the Copics, if you're not careful, you can get a really thick drip, and you don't really want that because it doesn't look realistic. It just looks way out of proportion with the character. So just keep that in mind. But the cool thing is with the cherry white marker, you can really just push around the color. So if you stuff it up, get your cherry white marker out and you can fix it up. Because you're going in and doing the blood at the end of the drawing, so you've done all the other layers, I've laid the skin, I'm gonna add the blood on top of the clothing at the end, but I always do it after. You don't have to worry about blending anything on top of the blood because if you go over it with another Copic, it's just gonna smudge. That's the whole technique of this. The cherry white markers used to smudge the light mahogany. So you've got to make sure you do this at the end because, like I said, if you do this too early, you're going over with other colors, it's going to smudge and it's just going to become a complete mess. So save the blood to basically go last or like what I do on the skin. All the skin's done so it can just go on top. That's all good. If you plan on using this technique, just be prepared for your cherry white marker to pretty much get destroyed. It ruins the nib, so unless you've got spare nibs, I personally just have a spare cherry white marker. Actually, I've got a bunch of them for some reason. So I have one that's specifically for blood. The nibs just gets ruined because you're blending so much with the light mahogany. It absorbs some of the ink and it just stuffs up basically. But it's worth it for the blood effects, I think. So maybe have a spare marker or have some spare nibs if you want to do this. I think that's pretty much all I can say about coloring blood. I'll be adding a bit more towards the end of this drawing, just to the clothing and a bit in her hair, so maybe I'll talk more about it then. But I think that's pretty much all of it covered, so let's move on with the drawing. I decided to give her a devil horn on one side. I thought it kind of balanced out the hearts on the other, and I really wanted to have the whole evil side and good side kind of thing going on. I don't know if it really works, but that was the idea of it anyway. Sometimes I get ideas to add things to drawings or just tweak things slightly, like partway through. I generally just go for it. I mean, if it doesn't work, no big deal. Kind of just move on to the next drawing kind of thing. But sometimes you can add some really cool stuff to it. Things that you normally wouldn't have done. So I generally just try and go with things. If I get an idea, I just try it out. Now I'm going in and colouring her hair. And I thought I should talk about this a little bit. Normally, I'm really not a fan of colouring black hair just because... 
There's something about using black which can be really unforgiving if you don't know what you're doing. So it's a little bit daunting going in straight up with really dark colours because you can't really fix that if you stuff it up. So what I like to do is just build it up from the grey colours and keep going darker on top of that. And then where the highlights are going to be, you just let the lighter shades of grey show through and have the dark blacks kind of going around that. Then I like to put in a little bit of purple and that kind of thing in the highlights just to give a bit more variety. I don't really like it if it's just straight blacks and greys. It's a little bit boring. So if you put a little bit of blues or purples in there, it still obviously stays looking black, but it almost gives it a look of reflecting light off the hair. And it looks cool in my opinion. Now that I've finished colouring everything, I'm going in and adding all the final touches of blood to her clothing and her hair. I feel like I can't really explain in any more detail about how I colour blood. I've pretty much said it all. The rest just comes from practice. It's one thing being told how to do something, it's another actually applying it yourself. So the rest is just going to come from you practicing it yourself and trying it out on your own drawings. Maybe try it on some simpler drawings first so you don't feel like you're ruining a drawing if it stuffs up. I'm sure you'll get the hang of it pretty quick. It's really, really easy to do. It's just kind of a confidence thing because, yeah, like I said before, you're going to feel like you're going to stuff up your drawing. Now I'm just adding the final highlights to everything with my Signo white gel pen. And then the drawing's done. I decided not to do anything for the background because I didn't want to spend too much time on this. I've got heaps of drawings I'm working on. So I just want to be able to move on to the next thing. If I wanted to spend more time on the background, maybe I'd do like cherry blossoms and that kind of scene for the background. But I'm lazy, so on to the next drawing, I think. If you guys want to keep up to date with what drawings I'm doing and see what videos are going to be coming out, check me out on Instagram. I post lots of stuff there and you'll get a sneak peek about what stuff's coming out. You'll see the works in progress before I upload them onto YouTube. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. Thank you guys for watching the video. I'm always humbled by all the nice comments I get. I can't believe that this many people enjoy watching someone draw. It's really weird. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out and it'd be much appreciated. And like always, I will catch you guys next week in next week's drawing video. I want to talk a bit about the drawing because I am up to my favourite part. And that is adding the blood. Originally, I wasn't sure if I wanted to add the blood. It didn't necessarily need it, but I so badly wanted to put it in <laughs> because I just enjoyed it.